So a few weeks ago, I was at my local Costco and came across this awesome battery powered power station. This is the EcoFlow Delta, and they actually have two variations. They have an 1100 or a 1000 and a 1300, and this is the 1300 model. Now this thing is on sale at Costco for $7.99. That's actually $100 cheaper than even EcoFlow has it on their website. So it's a fantastic value, but I wanted to see just what it could power. It's always great when they tell you how many hours it'll run a refrigerator or a microwave, but I wanted to know, can this thing be used in a professional setting as far as like, for me, in a car detailing business where I'm actually powering tools? So really quickly, let's jump into the specs of this thing and then we will get into some real life, real world situations where I'm actually using this unit out on some mobile detailing jobs and just see what it can do. So the EcoFlow Delta 1300 has a 1,260 watt hour capacity. It puts out 1,800 watts of continuous use and 3,300 peak. And it also operates on a 20 amp breaker. As you can see on one side, you have a nice digital display, which is beautiful. And you have DC, meaning you can run all your uh, electronics off of that side with the basic USB kind of, uh, and USB-C connection points. From there, you move over to the back side of the unit and you can open up this little door and that is your charging area. That's where you plug it in and keep this thing charged up. You can also hook it up to solar power if you wanted to. Um, and then we move around to the other side of the unit. And then on the other side, you have six outlets, your standard 110 or, or 120, however you want to call them, uh, outlets, as well as a car ch uh, charging port. Now for the overall size of this machine, it's a very, very small footprint. It's about 11 inches tall, about 15 and a half inches long at the widest point where the handles are, and about nine inches wide. And as far as the weight goes, that's where it really, really surprised me. Um, I was thinking this is gonna be like a, like a car battery. It's gonna be really heavy, and it's actually not that at all. This thing weighed in at 31 pounds for me. Now, to be perfectly honest with you, I was very, very excited to try this thing out, but I wasn't really expecting that much. I know we're talking about, you know, watt hour capacity and, and watts and running and all that kind of stuff, but to be fair, I've made it where I am today through hard work, not intelligence. So those numbers, although they're great and you can you know, figure some stuff out with them, I wanted to just see real world use so I could really get a good understanding of what this can do. So to start off, I wanted to clean up my Toyota Sequoia. This thing's been sitting outside. We haven't been using it as much and it's just been pretty dirty inside. It's been left that way. So I wanted to uh, hook up a vacuum. I'm gonna use a rigid vacuum here. This is a big shot vac and pulls a lot of power. Now this vacuum is listed at 12 amps at 120 volts. So that would be 1440 watts, I believe, of running watts. And again, this thing says 1800. So we should be fine. I fired it on and zero problem, guys. Actually, I was a little bit nervous about it. I know it lists that, but I wasn't sure if it was really gonna power it. And it powered it without any issue. Vacuumed for about 15 minutes in the vehicle and it was doing good. As you can see on the display, it'll tell you exactly how much runtime you have left based on this little genius of a machine where it's calculating how much power is being drawn from the machine uh, and what this is powering and it calculates how much time you have left. And we're actually gonna get into that here too at the end of the video. Uh, I have it fully powered. We'll just plug some stuff in and say what it, see what it says specifically. But for this situation, I'm gonna go ahead and continue on with the car. It's been vacuumed out now and now we have to wash it. So I'm going to be using a Krenzla 1122 TST. This is a high-end machine, high-end pressure washer that pulls a lot of watts also. This thing, I have notes here, it is rated at uh, 120 volts at 15 amps, which puts us right at that 1800 watts of, of continuous use. So I was a little bit nervous here. Uh, again, this has a total stop system, so it's gonna be firing on and running and then turning off and then, you know, and so forth. Um, and I have to say, I was pleasantly, pleasantly surprised this thing handled it with no issue. I was very, very shocked. Now the time that it lists here, you have to keep in mind, it may say a certain amount of time, but because it's a total stop system, as soon as you let go of the trigger of the pressure washer wand, it powers off and then this thing goes back to saying it's, you know, it has however much time left. So keep that in mind, when you're using a pressure washer, it's not full continuous, unless you're using something that it doesn't have a total stop system, but most pressure washers do. Um, so just keep that in mind. And even if it doesn't, it will still ramp down if it doesn't turn off all the way. So you're gonna get a longer life out of this, uh, use case out of this machine. And now finally, the vehicle's been washed down. I dried it down with a towel, but I do need to blow out the tight spots to get all the water out of those areas. For that, I'm using this little Adams Mini Air Cannon. This thing is rated at 120 volts at 10 amps. So 1200 watts. And uh, yeah, it handled it with no issue. I was able to go around, blow out all the tight spots with no issue and uh, get this thing all cleaned up. So for one car on a basic, you know, mini detail kind of situation, not running an extractor or anything like that, um, this thing handled it with zero, zero issues. Now, as far as a polisher goes, again, we'll, we'll test that here shortly and see what it says on how much runtime you'd be able to get out of a polisher. But for me, a lot of times I'm using a battery powered polisher now, so I don't have to be relying on this for that. 
So that was test number one. Test number two, I wanted to take this out on the road with me in a mobile detailing setup. Uh, I have a van set up and then I have a truck. In the van, I hate using my generator because you get a residual gas smell in the, in the van. Even though it's venting out of the back and everything else, it, I still get a gas odor in it and I hate that. So if this can power it, then I couldn't be happier. In this van, I have an active 2.0 electric pressure washer. It powered that without issue. And then it even powered my rigid uh, air compressor, which is a pretty heavy duty air compressor. Uh, I have notes again on that one. That is 120 volts at 14 and a half amps of continuous running and it handled it again with no problem. I was actually shocked by that one. Even though technically the numbers for the Kranzla are higher than the ones for the Rigid, the Rigid just seems like it pulls a lot of power. So I wanted to see and uh, it handled it with no issue and I was absolutely pleasantly blown away and surprised by that. So I was able to get through two vehicles, kind of the same thing, not a full detail. I wasn't doing any polishing on it with you know, being powered by this and I didn't use an extractor. These vehicles did not need that. The extractor definitely will pull a lot of more power out of this thing, especially depending on what you know, machine you're using. Now if you're using the, I think it's Rip Clean, I, if I remember well, that's the name of it, but an awesome extension that you can put on to a, like a basic rigid shop vac, turns it into an extractor, then you don't have to worry about it pulling any more power. Um, it's just gonna run off of the vacuum. And that's a really fantastic way to do it, especially if you're limited on space, you just have the extra hose, you hook it up and you're good to go. I did a whole video review on that little extractor kit. So uh, if you guys are interested, I'll link it up here for you so you can check that out as well. So just anecdotally, I know that this thing can work for me while I'm out detailing cars. I do get a little bit of range anxiety though. Like, you know, if we're talking about electric cars, you get that range anxiety. I did get that with this. I just wasn't sure if it was gonna keep going or not. Um, I will say the display does a fantastic job of giving you a, a, a pretty accurate uh, amount of time you have left, so that helps. Um, but I will say now, if I, have, if I know that I have two cars to go do, I can do it with this. Now as another test, I wanted to see how accurate this is at that countdown timer. So I hooked up just a hair dryer to it. It's gonna pull a good amount of power because the heating element in that as well, plus the, the fan. So I hooked that up to it. It basically said 18 minutes of runtime when I first plugged that in and turned it on. So I let that thing run, I took a timer and it was pretty close. So it took about 15 and a half to, yeah, about 15 minutes and 30 seconds for it to die. Again, it was showing 18 minutes. So. We're off a little bit, but not a lot, right? You can, you can still be pretty confident in these numbers so that you're, you're safe on what you're actually using. And with that, just to be fair, we let's go ahead and plug in a couple of uh, heavy duty power items and see what this states of how much runtime you're gonna get. Again, with a pressure washer, um, it's hard to tell because you're on and off with it. So we're not gonna do that, but you do get plenty of runtime with it. So now let's go ahead and check out some other things. So here is the MaxShine uh, M15 Pro, fantastic polisher. If I'm using a corded polisher, this is what I'm using. I absolutely love these things. This one's the 15 millimeter. Uh, M15, and then they have an M21 as well, which is a 21 millimeter throw. So just depending on what you're needing. Uh, this thing is listed at a thousand watts. So let's go ahead and turn this on. Very, very simple operation. Just turn it around here. Turn on the on button. The display comes up. I don't know if you guys can see that, but display comes up. And then just on the back side, when we're going over to the AC current, you just have to hit the button that says AC. That powers that on. And then we can go ahead and plug this in and take a look. I'm gonna gonna go ahead and zoom you guys in here so we can see a little bit better. All right, there we go. Here's the polisher. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull the trigger. Let me go ahead and put it all the way up. This is at full power, at full power. And it's showing three hours of runtime of this polisher. So obviously that's enough to get around a car in most cases, unless you're in a full blown correction. But um, if you're doing that, you're probably not gonna be running off of a little thing like this anyway. So, but in normal uh, everyday uses of just light polishing and kind of one steps, that'll get you through. Now, next up, we're gonna hook up the vacuum again. Uh, this is the one that was rated at 12 amps at 120 volts. Um, again, it got me through the car, no problem at all, but let's just get a good idea of what exactly it will run for. All right, I have it plugged in. Let me go ahead and zoom you guys back in so you can see in the machine. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the unit. So we'll call that right about an hour. Because when you first saw it turn on, it said 57 minutes and then it bumped up to an hour. So over an hour, but just say an hour to be safe. I'm assuming it said 57 at first because obviously when you start this thing up for the first time, it's gonna pull more wattage. 
Um, that's why it has a 3300 starting peak capacity. Um, so again, about an hour or slightly over for sure. Now let's run up to the front of the shop. I have a different air compressor up there, but let's go ahead and plug it into that one and see what it'll pair that for. Okay, so disregard the mess here, guys. This is my little workstation I was just working and it's a bit of a mess, but I have a Husky branded uh, quiet uh, air compressor here. Doesn't pull as much wattage, I don't think, as the one in the, as the rigid, it's not as powerful. But let's go ahead and plug this guy in. Okay, so we are all plugged in now. The unit's here, I'm gonna go ahead and fire it on. As you can see, this thing's nice and quiet, which is great. Just doesn't have the same amount of power as the other unit in my van. But this thing is saying, uh, the screen just went off, you just tap the on button. It's showing one hour. It was actually showing two hours a minute ago. So somewhere in between there, that's, I guess it could be, a, it'd be nice if it showed them hours and minutes, but um, not bad, one hour of use of an air compressor. Again, that's something that's not gonna be running continuously for an hour because as it fills up the tanks, it'll turn itself off. So you don't have to worry about it running that long. So you'll probably get two hours of use out of that. And also guys, one last note about when I was running the pressure washer, the Kranzla, it showed 30, just over 30 minutes, but I forgot that was after running the vacuum for quite a while. So I'm assuming at that wattage, um, yeah, we're probably get, you'd probably get close to an hour of use if you're just using that. So all these things add up, obviously this thing can't run all of it and you can't combine both of those things or too many things. It's 1800 of continuous power. So you can overload it if you go above that. So for my final recommendation on this EcoFlow Delta 1300 power station that is absolutely awesome and I'm very, very blown away by it. Um, would I use this in a professional setting? No, the reason being is it has a lifespan that they list of 800 cycles of being charged up to 80%. So again, I think that's good. It's just, if you're using it every day and recharging it every day, I mean, I guess technically that would still last like almost three years, two years, yeah, two and a half years. So not bad. Um, I just, if you want to go this route, I would go with a bigger unit that they have. They have a 3000 or 3600 or something like that that has I think it's like 3,000 recharges and all that kind of stuff. So you can power more with it. The only thing that I had on this machine that failed was an AR630 total stop pressure washer. It's an electric pressure washer, but they rate that thing. It's like, uh, I have notes here on that one as well. They rate that as 120 volts and I think it's at 19 amps. So that makes sense that it killed it. It started it and it ran it and then it popped. Meaning it started it because that peak power of this thing is 3300. It'll run that for a little bit, right? When you're starting stuff up and it handled the pressure washer, but the continuous use of that pressure washer at 19 amps at 120 puts us to about 2280 watts. This thing's rated for 1800 continuous, so it makes sense that it didn't power that. Again, if you go with a bigger unit, it will. Um, if you're not worried about having too many cycles, then this unit is phenomenal. I really, really, really like it. They also have other ones where you can actually daisy chain batteries together and get more power out of it. Uh, for me personally, I'm definitely going to be running one of these in my uh, mobile van. I'm just gonna pick up a bigger unit or maybe just a secondary one of these, depending on what the price difference is. Um, but I'm very, very, very impressed by this machine. So so take that for what it is, guys. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of what this thing can handle. I know some of you may be wondering like, hey, can it handle a, a, a skill saw or something like that? All of my tools like that are all battery powered, so I can't test it on this. But just do the calculation. If it's around that, you know, 1800 watts, you're probably gonna get an hour, 45 minutes to an hour if you're just using that one thing um, and then kind of go from there. So I hope that video helps you guys. Please make sure to like the video. Make sure you subscribe. Turn on that notification bell and we'll see you on the next one.